Hello and welcome to episode five of BT's The Future Is Now, the forward thinking series where we explore how technology is driving companies and organisations, creating opportunities for businesses to excel now and in the future. Now, this time we are talking about cyber threats. They're on the rise and are increasingly sophisticated. What businesses want and need to know is what can be done to prevent an attack. Coming up are three chapters, each answering this question in different and interesting ways. First, we're joined by BT's data and security expert in human behaviours, Mike Fortune. He'll be looking at things we all innocently do at work, in the office or on social and explain how our behaviour might be opening the door for cyber criminals. Next, we're joined by cybersecurity training experts, Immersive Labs. They'll share their innovative approach and explain how continually upskilling staff helps build more robust defences. Lastly, BT's Rob Daniels delves into what tech is out there to help you. He also explains why it's important in cybersecurity to find a technology partner that fits your business. You can choose which one to watch in whatever order simply by clicking on the chapter markers below. Oh, you can just let the video play and I'll take you through everything. Hello, I'm now joined by BT's data and security expert in human behaviours, Mike Fortune. Mike, lovely to see you. So can I ask about your background first of all, because your background's in behavioural psychology, isn't it? It is stuff, you're right. Um, but actually I've got an interesting background and an interesting skill set, not just in behavioural psychology. For example, I'm an expert in body language, linguistics, um, I'm a hypnotist, a cognitive behavioural therapist. I suppose you could say I'm a student of human behaviours. So how would you describe your job now? Well, I work in data privacy, data protection, data compliance, and I'm responsible for driving the right behaviours and culture across BT, all of our business, around protecting our data. But I'm also BT subject matter expert for social engineering, which is the human side of security. God, that's really interesting. So. How is it businesses become victims of cyber attacks? Well, it's a great question, Steph, and there's many reasons. But I think the first thing we need to do is understand that the world has changed, and that includes the world of crime. First of all, data is the currency of today. It really is. And it's not just about our data could be taken. I think we need to see beyond that as well. And actually, the human element plays a big part, because before these big cyber breaches happen, technical hacks happen, quite often there's been a human breach. And that means someone's clicked on something, someone's downloaded something, someone's got a weak password, they give information away over the phone. I can go on. In fact, our human firewall has been compromised. And you mentioned a human firewall. What is it? Well, the human firewall is our first layer of defence. It's ensuring each and every one of us, no matter if it's in work or in our personal lives, have heightened data and security awareness in what we do. So who's the most susceptible then to cybercrime? Is it SMEs or large businesses? Well, I suppose you could say the more employees you've got, the more chance of a breach. But the reality is, I think, it's all of us. It's dependent on the criminals, what level of criminality, who they want to target. But also we have to accept that, you know, small business, for example, could be used to attack a big business. We could use a procurement company to get at a bigger business. In fact, I can give you examples here of where a charity has been targeted through their people so that the bad people could get at their vulnerable clients' financial information. I give you an example where a garage has been targeted through their people so they could get at the systems of go um, for, like customers and government. I give you an example where a contact centre has been targeted, where they're trying to get at the credit card information of customers. So it can affect all of us. Wow. To be honest, that sounds really worrying. So what advice have you got then for businesses to stay protected? So there's three main bits of advice that stick out to me above all else. Uh, the first one is make sure all your systems, your software, your devices are up to date. Why? Because criminals find ways in. And what the updates are are the fixes to keep the bad guys out. Uh, secondly, make sure that your people have strong security awareness training, that human firewall piece again, and especially around what we call the issues. And the issues are phishing, which is email, um, scamming, you've got vishing, which is phone, and you've got smishing, which is anything coming over a message platform or likes of social media. 
And finally, make sure you've got good, strong security processes and procedures in place and have an avenue for advice and guidance always. And what advice do you have for individuals wanting to protect themselves? So businesses look after their data, and quite right too, but actually all of us need to take ownership and responsibility for our personal data. It's all about the data. We need to ensure we're managing our online presence, our online profiles, anything where we're giving data away. I'm going to leave you with three key steps for me, which I think are really important. Number one, check you know what you need to know about your personal data. Number two, own, take responsibility and manage your personal data. Number three, secure and protect your personal data. Well, Mike, I'll be honest, I've learned a lot from that as well. So thank you so much. And if you want to know more about protecting your business, have a look at the links below. Hello, now we're going to look at the importance of ongoing cyber security training. It's an area where 48% of UK businesses feel that their staff lack the necessary skills. So with me to chat about it is Kev Breen from Immersive Labs. They're a fast growing cyber security company and a BT partner as well. Lovely to see you, Kev. Thanks and for you. joining me. Um, so should we talk about this skills gap then? What's, what is it? What's causing it? Uh, at the core, it's a lack of people with the right training. Uh, the threat landscape is always changing and we as defenders, are, we're always playing catch up to this. Uh, traditional cybersecurity doesn't keep up to pace with this very quickly uh, and it focuses too much on your technical teams, uh, where in reality your entire team needs upskilling, not just your IT. You also can't just rely on doing this once a year. Yeah, as you say, it's ever changing. So I guess you need a kind of well-rounded approach to, you, to your training of cybersecurity. Yeah, definitely. And you need to elevate the people to the same levels of technology. Uh, companies invest a lot of money in technology. And what you should really do is focus on your people, uh, their cyber knowledge, their skills and their judgment. And again, at all levels and all teams. So how can businesses stay on the front foot then? Uh, so again, treat them like the software. So see exactly where your people's strengths and weaknesses are and follow that up by injecting timely targeted cybersecurity training. And again, focusing on continually equipping people with those relevant skills. Have you got anything in particular that SMEs should be watching out for? Yeah, so they should definitely keep up to date with the latest security and software updates, uh, as well as keeping their staff up to date with what's happening in the real world. They should couple that with exercises and simulations that try to match real world events. This will help encourage and develop cyber knowledge. Uh, knowing your role in an attack uh, makes training a lot more engaging. So what about for larger corporations then? So larger business is a much more complex and technical environment. You need to make sure you don't just throw money uh, at more and more tech. You need to make sure you're investing in your people at the same time. You also need to make sure you find the right partner to help with security, someone like BT. Attacks are always going to happen. Uh, it's how you deal with them that's the most important. Yeah. So if you get your, your staff up to standard in terms of cybersecurity training, does that mean you can relax about the technology? Definitely not. You need to find that really strong balance between your technical controls and your people controls. Uh, it's really easy to focus on one and not the other when actually what you need to do is invest in your people. They're the, the ones who are going to be operating that software long term for you. Yeah, I mean, that all makes total sense. Thanks, Kev, for your time. If you would like more information on how to protect your business against cyber threats, have a little look at the links below. Hello. Well, now we're going to look at how technology and services can help protect against cyber security threats. With me is Rob Daniels, a BT security expert. So you know everything on this. So can you give us some context, Rob, and, and just tell me a bit about what the future of cyber security is? Well, cyber criminals are here to stay and the threat landscape is growing exponentially. And it's impacting businesses in the UK of all sizes. In fact, a UK small or medium business is successfully attacked every 19 seconds. And these cyber attacks are getting more sophisticated. Cyber criminals are looking at how our business models of our customers are evolving, and they're evolving with them. Cyber criminals see how our customers are using cloud services, and so they are looking for ways to get at the data that we're storing in the cloud. And we're using our mobile devices more and more to store our own personal data, but also corporate information. And cyber criminals know that. Oh, it sounds scary. So how are BT responding to this? So we have a great team of experts, but even they need help. So we're investing in technology such as artificial intelligence, machine learning, and automation. All of these are tools 
that help to turn our experts into superheroes because they can use this technology to spot threats earlier and deal with them faster. Yeah. Do they wear capes as superheroes? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's part of the uniform. Yeah. <laughs> There must be so much tech out there though. So kind of, can you break it down for us a bit? There is a whole broad set of technology out there and more is being invented every day. For example, some technology is there to secure your connection. Other technology may be used to protect the identities of your people, or they might be protecting your use of the cloud. And then there may be some technology out there that's also trying to give you more visibility of the threats that might be impacting your business. Right, so how do you decide then what's the best tech for you? Well, with so much technology out there, you really need to first understand what is the outcome you're trying to achieve. So are you trying to secure your use of cloud services? In which case you may want to use something like a cloud access security broker. Are you concerned about protecting your people and securing your data? If that's the case, you may want an identity management solution or a data loss prevention solution. Or is it that you want to have much more visibility of threats that impact your business, in which case a threat management solution may be right for you? And I guess choosing the right tech partner is really important too. A hundred percent, because this will be an ongoing relationship, given how quickly the security landscape is evolving. And really, for most customers, it does not make sense for them to try to do it themselves. Mm. Smaller customers rarely have their own security staff. And even larger customers are struggling to find the talent that they need. So working with an organization that has the security expertise and knows how to apply it to your specific situation is absolutely critical to make sure that you are well protected. And by expert, you mean BT. Of course, of <laughs> course. We, BT, we have developed what we call BT Tradecraft over the many years of securing ourselves and a, and a good portion of UK critical national infrastructure. We take all of that knowledge that we've built up over time and we build it into the managed services that will secure you. Some great advice there, Rob. Thank you very much. Now, if you want to know more about protecting your business, have a look at the links below. So we've seen some crucial measures that UK businesses can take to combat cyber threats. Ways we can empower ourselves and our staff to get on the front foot in the fight against cybercrime and maybe stop leaving our passwords written on post-it notes. Until next time, take care. <laughs>